DeKalb police officers say that Latessa's brother-in-law approached three women in this parking lot with a knife. The officers then responded, and when he wouldn't stop, they shot him. When asked tonight if she would consider the death penalty in this case, the U.S. attorney says it was premature to make that call tonight. This is a decontamination process for the hazmat team. They have to wipe them down and make sure they don't have any chemicals on them. There's been so much, um, so many rumors just going around about what will, will and won't go. Students are fed up with mixed messages from leaders at AASU. The AASU president sent this. As difficult as this is, we have determined it will be necessary to discontinue some specific programs and services. Students say that isn't good enough. We get a really vague email that's not specific and doesn't give us any information really other than, yeah, programs will get cut, faculty will be terminated, but we don't know what yet. I'm, they need to start making decisions before they start public panic. Some students wore these masks during the protest to demonstrate they feel they're being treated just like a number. Katie Mosby has one year left to complete her dental hygienist program. She says her professor told the class the program might be cut. We have the right to finish. Um, once you've started a program, I mean, it's like a promise. We've given them the money. We've given them our time. And where's the product? You can't, uh, that's robbery. Some students say they don't have the means or funds to go anywhere else. I can't afford anything but Armstrong, so it just makes it so much harder to just have to pick up and leave in such short notice. If it happens, I'm going to have to go in August. And it just feels like they don't care. Students say the ideal scenario would be to put more money into education, not take it away. Deidre Johnson, WJCL, Fox 28, TheCoastalSource.com. It was an unfamiliar sight in Nahanta, Georgia. The Knight Riders of the Ku Klux Klan held a rally near the Brantley County Courthouse, drawing a lot of attention from the community. Local, state, and federal law enforcement officials were on hand to protect those attending the rally. We're just making sure that we got enough people to protect everybody. We don't want anybody getting hurt. We're here to tell you to wake up, Georgia, and stop the Latino invasion now. Yeah! Representatives from the Klan spoke about illegal immigration, the economy, and prayer in schools. Hundreds of people are attending the KKK rally behind me. In fact, in its prime, the KKK had about 6 million members. Today, that figure is more like five to 8,000. The rally drew opposition from many in the community. There's no need for such a rally. Uh, I thought we was further along. To have something like this kind of shows uh, everybody else that we're still a bunch of dumb inbred rednecks. Others thought the rally was just an expression of their First Amendment rights to free speech. Well, I think they come here to support a cause and they, you know, they got a good reason to. They've been doing it for years. The NAACP protested the rally and had strong words for the organization. Anywhere that racism, bigotry, hatred lift its ugly head, we are here to counter protest it. In the end, the rally was peaceful and the city of Nahanta can go back to being a small town. Deidre Johnson, WJCL, Fox 28, thecoastalsource.com. Those were the gunshots that woke up Watertown, Massachusetts in the middle of the night. Tonight, there's no more wondering if the two men accused of planting a bomb at the finish line of the Boston Marathon are plotting another attack. One of the brothers is dead, and the other one is in police custody at the hospital. NBC's Jay Gray has been watching the events unfold in Boston all week. He joins us live from Watertown now with the latest. Now starts what will be, no doubt, a long legal process for the 19-year-old suspect. Our Devin Feely joins us now to explain what's next. The past 24 hours have been extremely wild, to say the least. Our Jeff Hollinger is here now to take us through what happened. Tonight's amazing turn of events has not only captivated Boston, but the entire nation. So many people were glued to their TV sets, desperate for details. 11 Alive's Blaine Alexander continues our team coverage tonight with more on this story. Blaine? Of course, there is new information pouring in every minute, and we are following every detail. We'll go back live to Boston and hear from a reporter who has been live on the scene tonight. And you can always get the latest updates and see our photo gallery on 11alive.com. Still to come tonight, ripped off rooftops and destroyed homes where a tornado touched down in Georgia today.
Okay, thank you, James. Well, another step towards shutting down speed cameras in Ridgeland. The state house approved a bill that requires officers to hand drivers a ticket in person. The house votes one more time before sending it to the Senate, which has passed its own version. The mayor of Ridgeland supports the camera, saying they save lives. The Georgia Supreme Court is asked to reconsider a decision that would shut down 16 schools across the state. The Attorney General filed the request on behalf of the Georgia Charter Schools Commission. That commission was ruled unconstitutional because it allowed the state to open and fund charter schools without local school board approval. A constitutional amendment is now being considered. All right, well, now I'll enjoy this with a look at sports. An art festival brings the country's leading artists along with top local talent to Hilton Head. The island celebrates the third annual Hilton Head Island Art Festival. For the two-day festival, artists showcase their work at the Shelter Cove Harbor. Paintings, contemporary art, sculptures, photography, ceramics, and jewelry are just some of the many items featured during the event. Hundreds of people attended this year's Hilton Head Island Art Festival. Well, it's a play with an interesting name and one that's being put on by SCAD. SCAD presents the play Dog Sees God, where Burt Royal reimagines the Peanuts gang in a hilarious contemporary comedy. The play is about a dog that dies from rabies, causing one to question the existence of an afterlife. It's a modern comedy that's extremely funny, a little bit controversial, and ultimately hopeful. SCAD students loved being a part of it. SCAD students prepared weeks and weeks to put on the play. Coming up on WTGS News, troops overseas pay tribute to those who lost their lives fighting for our country. And could the UN peace mission in Sudan be in jeopardy? Find out more after the break. U.S. troops serving in Afghanistan hold a candlelight vigil in honor of Memorial Day. Members of the Army stationed in Kabul hold flickering candles while singing various patriotic songs like God Bless America. Some Black Hawk helicopters even rumbling through the night skies. The holiday honors military members who have been killed in service. Current troops say their fellow soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice are not forgotten. Memorial Day is considered a federal holiday. Banks, financial markets, and schools will all be closed Monday in observance.